discussed the backward error results for dot product for matrix vector multiply and we gave an argument of why for matrix matrix multiply there is no backward error result but there is a forward error result. And now we move on to something a little bit more complex and we look at LU factorization. Now, yeah, we know that when we're given a square matrix A that has certain properties, the uh, leading principal submatrices are all non-singular. Under those circumstances, A can be factored into L times U, where L is unit lower triangular, U is upper triangular. When we compute on a computer with a given algorithm, we know that we instead compute an L and U that are approximations to the actual L and U that we want. So to compute it, L and U, we're going to call L check and U check. Now remember that what we're interested in is not so much whether L and U are almost the actual L and U that we want. L check and L and U are almost exactly the L and U that we want. Obviously that'd be nice, but we're satisfied if the L and U that are computed can be attributed to a small change in A. So the result that we would like would be to say, well, the change in A is somehow small relative to A. And we've noticed that we'd like to come up with these error results that are in terms of the absolute value of the entries of whatever we're computing with. So it would be nice to be able to say, well, this is less than or equal to, ooh, if we could make this the machine epsilon times the absolute value of A, That'd be great. Now, we've already seen that you know, typically instead of the machine epsilon here, this value gamma sub n comes in. And when n is not too large, gamma sub n is approximately n times the machine epsilon. Okay. Now, unfortunately, that's not what comes out either. The actual result that comes out, well, actually depends on what algorithm you pick. And you know, we've sort of hinted at the fact that there are five different algorithmic variants for computing the LU factorization. And the one that is most convenient for doing this backward error analysis, where things just kind of fall out the nicest, is known as the crowd variant. It's kind of a weird variant where, as you compute, the state that you try to keep the matrix in is where this, this, and this is completely done. And this part of the matrix has not yet been touched. And then you figure out what updates must happen in order to move forward. For that particular algorithmic variant, you can show that the change in A can be attributed to, sorry, the computed L and U are equal to the exact LU factorization of a changed matrix with this property right here. Okay? Hmm. Is that good? Or is that bad? What happens if we add uh, partial pivoting? Maybe you should take a minute and actually think about that, and then we'll talk about this some more.